Hey guys, welcome to the first part of basic DreamBot scripting with your host computer. Before we begin, I'd like to say that I expect you to know the basics of Java before you start watching this tutorial, and this shouldn't be your intro into Java. Although scripting is a great place to start learning more Java, it's not really the best place to start. I've been noticing the lack of video tutorials on DreamBot, and I always enjoyed watching tutorials to speed up my learning process while trying to script. Today we're going to be covering the basics of scripting on DreamBot. I'll be using the IntelliJ IDE today, but I won't be showing you how to set it up. You can use any IDE you want for the project, it just might take you longer than me to compile your projects. So let's get started. We're going to be creating a basic woodcutter. So we're going to go to our source, we're going to right click new package and we'll call it basic woodcutter. Okay. Now inside of that package we're going to create a new Java class and we'll call it main class. Okay, so now we're going to add the script manifest and IntelliJ is going to help me add in all the categories that I am missing. So we're missing a category, so we're going to call it category woodcutting. The name of the script is going to be basic woodcutter. Oops, WD. Woodcutter and its author computer and it is version 1.0. All right, so this class that we just created is now going to extend abstract script. Great. Now it's going to complain that we're missing some methods, so we're going to go ahead and implement them. So we have on loop, and there's a couple other that I want here too. So we're going to say et override. We're going to say public. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's void. We'll find out on start. Yes, great. So now we have our on start, on loop, and on exit. And we can also put in our on paint. So our on start method will start once at the beginning of a script load. So as soon as we click the play button, start a script, and then hit start, right, it will happen then and only once. This will never be repeated more than once. So let's go ahead and just say log high. And all log is doing is it is printing a line to DreamBot's console, which you can find by going to the console, tools, debug, and debug console. And all your messages will show up here. So next we have our on loop function. On loop is a function that is repeatedly called by the DreamBot framework in order to execute the script. We have our on exit, which executes once at the end of the script when you hit the stop button. And it's similar to the on start method. And we have our on paint method, which draws nice infographics on the screen. So let's get started. I've already logged into my RuneScape account. Uh, pretty basic, just created it for this tutorial. I'll probably post the account, username, and password in the description if you just want it for whatever reason. Um, so we're going to uh, go over the basic steps, which are we want to cut a tree, then after we cut the tree we're going to check if our inventory is full. If it isn't, we're going to cut another tree, um, but if it is full, then we're just going to go into the bank, we're going to use a bank, and we're going to deposit all the logs and then start all over again. So our loop is going to return every 100 milliseconds. Right, that's what it's saying. The return is in milliseconds, so a thousand uh, milliseconds is one second, so that would return every one second. So it would do the whole loop every one second. So we'll have this at 600, which should be fast enough uh, that your script will stay up to date and uh, also not kill your CPU when trying to do processes. So let's go ahead and start in the on loop. We're going to create a new game object of the tree. Trees are game objects in RuneScape. So we're going to create a new game object called tree, and we're going to set it equal to get game objects that closest. And then we're going to use the lambda function that is in Java 8 uh, to create a new game object filter. Um, but if you don't have Java 8, which I'll be really surprised if you don't, we're just going to say a new closest 
add new filter, okay? And I will post all this code in the description, but if you have Java 8, just go ahead and follow along. So our game object is a tree, right? Uh, RuneScape is weird, and sometimes there's game objects that are null. So we're gonna go ahead and check for a null game object. So we want to say game object is not equal to null. That means this filter right here will grab all the game objects uh, near us uh, in a list and then sort them based on the closest one to them. Uh, and it will filter all the game objects that we want to based on the arguments that we give it. So we'll search for non-null game objects first. Now we want it to search for game objects with the name tree. So we're going to say and game object dot ha or get name dot equals and we're going to say tree. So I just want to stop and point out right here if you ever say if you're ever trying to compare the name uh, to a string, you never want to say game object uh, dot get name equals equals tree because you're comparing a reference and that's bad because sometimes they're off by bytes and whatnot and so they won't equal each other. So we're going to use the dot equals function provided by Java. So now our filter will be looking for a null game or a non-null game object and a game object with the name of tree. Uh, if you want to be really safe, you can go ahead and add another uh, option that it needs to check that has action chop down. So the tree also, or the game object also needs to have the action uh, chop down, right? But we're not gonna do that because I'm pretty sure that this just checking the name uh, for tree is going to be fine. So I'd like to point out that tree and oak tree, or oak I guess, are different names. So if you say closest tree, it will only look for trees. Uh, but if you say closest oak, it will only look for oaks. So now that we have our game object initialized, we're going to interact with it. So we're going to say tree.interact, which is a dreambot method, and it takes a parameter of the action that we want to interact with it. So its action is chop down. So we're going to go ahead and say chop down. Okay. So once, so now every uh, 600 milliseconds, so basically half a second. It will find the closest tree and chop it down. And let's go ahead and show that really quickly. Basic woodcutter and we'll hit start. So now it finds the tree, it clicks it, and then we'll just continue clicking it every 600 milliseconds. So great, we had it find a tree, and now we need to add some sleep timers. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and say if we interact with it, chop down, uh, because all or most DreamBot API methods return as a boolean uh, to let you know if the action happens or not. So if we actually do succeed in interacting with the tree and interacting with the option chop down, we're going to do something. So we're going to say if we interact with it, then sleep until. We're going to use the lambda again sleep until new condition. So what's our condition that we want? Well, we should uh, have it sleep until either the tree is gone or we have a log in our inventory. So the log in our inventory seems like the better option. So we're gonna go ahead and get the count of logs in our inventory. Count log equals get inventory dot count and logs. I'm pretty sure it's logs. We'll double check that. It might just be log. Let's cut a tree down. Okay, so it is logs. So we're going to create a new integer holding the count of logs in our inventory. So at the moment that would return one because we only have one log in our inventory. So we're going to sleep until there's a greater count of logs in our inventory than the original count of logs. Uh, which means that as soon as we click it, it will get the count 